हरिओम नमस्ते रक्षातुल जी हरिओम वैद्या जी हरिओम हरिओम जी हरिओम वसुदेवन जी हरिओम श्रीनिवास जी हरिओम पुष्पा जी हरिओम भामा जी हरिओम अरविंद जी हरिओम जी हरिओम जी हरिओम डॉक्टर पुष्पा जी हरिओम विल जस्ट वेट फॉर फ्यू मोर मिनट्स Yes, we just wait for uh, say three to four minutes. If anybody has any query, anything, any shloka you want to relook at, uh, you're most uh, welcome. We can uh, look at that shloka. We stopped at uh, shloka number thirty-four. We will be starting from the thirty-fifth shloka. Hari Om Dipti Ji. Hari Om. So we will be starting from the thirty-fifth shloka shortly. Any queries? Anything you wish to uh, relook at, or any particular uh, shloka from the past, uh, say even ten adhyayas which we have covered, uh, you are most welcome. Or we'll just wait for the participants to join. हरि ओम सावित्री जी हरि ओम हरि ओम जी वी स्टार्ट इन अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स इफ यू विश लुक एट एनी पर्टिकुलर श्लोक यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम All right. I think we can uh, begin with the invocation. Hari Om Nikchi. Hari Om. Saraswati Namastabhyam Varade Kamarupini Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhe Bhavatume Sada Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim. यकृपातमहम वंदे परमाधव वसुदेव सुत कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु हरि ओम यस सो वी नाउ कंटिन्यू आर जर्नी इन टू दि गीता वी आर इन द लेवेंथ अध्याय can someone recollect uh, something that we have seen before in the last adhyay so we can what from what we saw in the last session so we can have a link yes please what is it that is happening in the gita yes please विश्वरूप दर्शन श्लोक 
and also seeing that everybody is merging into him. Okay. Soldiers, warriors. All the warriors are entering into uh, the Vishwarupa. Yes, please. Yes, Srinivas ji. Yes, please. Krishna, Krishna um, told uh, Arjuna that uh, he is just a Nimitta. Nimitta Matra. That was on last dialogue. Yes, yes. Yeah, and... Uh, Hari Om. Hari Om. He has to... He, he is just an instrument and you have to work as an instrument only. Don't, uh, don't think beyond that. Okay. Whatever is uh, assigned to you, that you have to perform now. Okay. And this is all destined. I had already decided. Okay. And that death is certain. Only you are the Nimitta Matra. Okay. All right. Yes, Srinivas ji. Thank you. I will come to that. Yes, Deepthi ji. Yes, please. Um, when he, uh, first of all, Arjuna was like, how do, I mean, he demand, he requested for the darshan, but he was like, how is going to like, so then Krishna said, I'll give you the eyes. The He'll open the inner eye. Yeah. And then uh, he saw different rope, he saw different devs, different devis, I mean, different rope. Yeah. As, uh, as Krishna has already mentioned, that everything is within me. So he was seeing slowly, slowly, but as he was seeing slowly, slowly. Uh, he could also see the karma, he could see the demons, he could see the bloodshed. So that excitement, that happiness, uh, that joy slowly, slowly changed into fear. Yeah, yeah. He was scared, very, very scared that how do I mean, he was not even, like he was so overwhelmed by that. that it's it's something like, as you said, that sometimes we uh, have to sometimes think before we wish. So it was yeah. like that at that state of point. Gee, gee. Yes, Deepthi ji. So if you see, it was a very sincere wish, what we can say, an emotional desire inside of him, I'm on the darshana. Now, this was a legitimate emotional desire is what Krishna felt. So Krishna granted him. But then we know emotions have their own limitations. So now what happens is he starts getting excited, all the beautiful colors, the beautiful uh, sugandhas, all of them coming in all directions, overwhelming Arjuna. Arjuna is somehow just getting ecstatic, receiving so many different uh, visual uh, stimuli, even probably his ears are hearing different thing, his smell, he's feeling the warmth of the sun and it's not like one sun, it's like a huge nuclear explosion, several suns and what happens when multiple suns rise, they become light only, you cannot see, already one sun is too bright, so all of them it looks like they have merged, then suddenly the scene changes, it's like a continuous dynamic darshan which is going on. And now slowly the fear starts striking inside of Arjuna and one interesting aspect is Arjuna says you are the one, the guardian of the Sanatan Dharma, you are the Shashwat uh, Dharma, guard. means this is this confidence, this understanding was something which Arjuna got only now, till now he felt he was the guardian, if you see in the first Adhyay, he felt it is his onus, onus is on me, I am going to do this and look, I am going to fail the world and world is going to suffer. All these things were bringing him emotions and troubles because of that in the first Adhyay. But now we see a slight change in him and he's saying this is the all-powerful. The Almighty is really this mighty and he's not able to bear it. And if you see first he says his delusion is gone after Krishna's words and he wants a darshana. Now he is back to that state of panic. He says please proceed the Devesh, the Jagan Nivasa, Shamam Cha Vishnu. He does the full sashtang and he just says, please, please, he says, because now he is not able to bear this. He says, no, I was not thinking of this form. Please show me. He says, show me that form again. Show me the other form is what he requests. Then, after that, he said, and he understands that, see, this is the form. He understands this form is a true form. But he says, please show me the one behind this which will understand, which is connect relatable to me, something which I can understand. And that is when Krishna just says, see, Arjuna, he says, I am, I am time, Kalosmi, I am time, harbinger of destruction of everything. Because we are in a Shara Vishwa, Kala is something which is going to catch up with every single object which is perishable. And that is exactly what Krishna is saying, Kalosmi, I am that, I am time, I will bring that uh, death, he says, to, I am that death only for all those who are, opposing the force of the divine 
they may think they are very powerful but they are not in front of this brute force of a time and death he goes on he says rise he says rise rise tasmat uttishta yashola bhasva rise and get that glory that is worthy of you he is telling that he says rise for that that glory a glory awaits you so the instrument the divine instrument if they can become an instrument many times why why don't i have why should my ego not be there why should i surrender to the divine these are all internal questions that a person asks but we know this we have studied about the limitation of ahankar the side effects of ahankar the slide effects of the karma bandhana all this in the gita we have seen because this is finite finite ego versus infinite power this is the exact situation right now arjuna in front of vishwarupa darshana how fine how insignificant is it in present of that means the supreme aham is that brahma aham brahmasmi and the small aham is aham arjuna aham sushrota whatever name i want to say i am so limited this and i am again what i am today i may not be tomorrow but that is something which is not changing so this is a direct uh, confrontation taking place one way between the supreme and the infinite and the finite and it's a beautiful exchange and krishna here just tells him he says no that no that don't worry what's what's going to happen probably this was the confidence where there was a time in india when there was a, we were oppressed an oppressed nation because of invaders because so many factors it would look like dharma is going to become completely destroyed and that was the plan that was the plan of the invaders they did not want the wealth only they wanted to remove our backbone but even that time there were warriors not like arjuna running away from the battle they were willing to lay down their lives great great heroes and heroines were born how many uh, of them what were they fighting what were what was the source of strength for them why, why if you see the mauryas of uh, maharashtra how did they fight jay bhavani jay shivaji and they would go on running with that force inside of them and they would make armies 10 times their proportion in sheer volume they would flee they were afraid because where, where was the strength coming from that confidence was yes we are the instruments for a divine will the divine will is there for swarajya we will fight because that is the will for our india's freedom struggle how many youngsters laid their lives because of what they understood we will be the nimitta matra for a future for a generation which will not remember us but that generation will breathe a free air and this is the divine will shri arvindo got the adesh inside of the prison and that was the adesh that now it was like he had a dialogue with krishna only inside of the alipo prison india will get freedom i will see to that is what krishna promised him but what about that india after it becomes free when a free india searches for answer who is going to provide that who will do the who will lay that foundation and that is probably what uh, the so many years immediately after that a hero who could have been uh, become very well the greatest revolutionary suddenly disappears much to the surprise of all the other freedom fighters even subhash chandra bose in his younger days he got that fire from reading share in those writing he was a mystic uh, spiritual revolutionary that was a very interesting combination and suddenly he has disappeared then many said no this is not right and what was he doing 17 years inside one room what sadhana was he doing well that is a different thing we we do not need to look at that but he was laying that foundation of what should be done later on but understanding that one has to become the nimitta matra is so important for even sri arbindo in his prison he was troubled what will i do for my motherland i want to do something and then he just got the adesh that i am looking after the motherland you do the work which you are meant to be doing and then that is exactly a new direction started you can say the birth of a new consciousness in for him and for humanity as well so with that krishna goes on he says see don't be troubled don't be in pain all these forces they look very powerful in front of you but remember i am so powerful i can any time end their journey any moment you you have to just perform your duty you are the medium remember to be the medium medium of the divine will not an ego will of an individual but the divine will and he says defeat all of them defeat and don't worry about the sin that you were thinking of don't worry about that just uphold your righteous duty which you are meant to do what is your swadharma your inner calling follow it and do not worry about what is going to happen again it is a way of karmanne vadika rasthe mam phaleshu kadachana 
don't worry if you are not going to survive or you are going to survive and then face consequences you are doing the right thing with your inner spirit is telling you he goes on further sanjay watch now sanjay is speaking to dhritarashtra in the palace etat shrutva vachanam keshavasya krucha krutanjali vepamanah kiriti namaskrutva bhuya evah krishnam sagad gadam bhita bhita pranamy sanjay spoke on listening to the voice of krishna with folded hands stood a trembling arjuna bowing to the lord in obeisance he shuddered and in a faltering voice arjuna the following words he uttered so krishna has told don't be afraid but this is not his beloved krishna his madhava who is speaking this is a ugra rupa so arjuna is probably getting it amplified and he does not know which mouth of the vishwarupa is telling him don't be afraid it may be coming from all directions so this has he is just his shaking he is afraid and only arjuna can tell what feeling he got we cannot it is not we can it's not even palpable the exact extent of the fear inside of arjuna watching it's like almost krishna his krishna has suddenly changed and he is like this it is like my god what a monstrous figure is there in front of him he is so afraid his hands are folded he is trembling his voice is also shaking and he goes on now this just look at this shloka and i want you to then look at it either it is uh, matching his feeling the way what he is saying does it match his feeling arjuna watch sthane rishikesh tava prakirtya jagat prahashyat yanarajyate cha rakshase bhitani desho dravanti sarve namasyanti cha siddha sangah arjuna declared of your name o krishna it is thus rightly perceived that by uttering it a joyous bliss across the world is achieved while the forces of evil flutter in all directions and flee all the awakened beings and sages adore thee with glee he says oh krishna actually this word rishikesha krishna's name is said to be at the moment it spreads joy that is the word rishikesha so he says hey rishikesha hey krishna it is said of your name that when your name is uttered there is a ripple of ananda which spreads everywhere he says it is this is the right perception so many have understood and the forces of evil they run they run and they hide they hide because they cannot uh, tolerate your uh, radiance but all the awakened beings are celebrating they always celebrate and that is why they love you so much this arjuna is saying now is arjuna feeling happy because right now he says the moment you say rishikesha you get happy everybody feels that ananda inside is arjuna having that ananda right now is he out of character and his dialogue is something else and he is feeling something else or what do you think is the logic behind this because his voice is shaking he is faltering and he says this i'll look at one more shloka probably we can just analyze that also what is arjuna going through then i will just stop the next shloka you can please let me know kasmachatena name nameran mahatman gariyase brahmano pyadi kartre ananta devesh jagan nivas tvam aksharam sad sat tat param yat oh how can they not worship you and offer their respects thou hast created the creator and all his mortal subjects O Lord, O infinite Lord of gods, in whom the universe resides, over all that is and is not, Thy insuperable Lordship resides. So yes, back to my question. Arjuna is sounding in a state of bhakti and sounding like he is making, he is doing a stuti. He is speaking about the brilliance of God and how happiness is spread. But do you think he is fully blissful right now? Yes. No, he is not. He is scared. But I, I mean, but I get, think is that um, he he knew that uh, Krishna would protect him. But when he saw the different route, hmm. and uh, so he is like very very sure that everything is like going to be in place because everybody, if everything is coming from him and everything is going out, so okay, it it is his only, and he is just doing all these things to protect him. Okay. 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 Ok
Uh, no, means by what I was asking was now he said Rishikesha, the name spreads a ripple of joy everywhere, is what Arjuna is saying. Can Arjuna not say Rishikesha, Rishikesha, Rishikesha and become blissful? He is, is he not feeling that inside of him? He is speaking it. Yeah. So, so inside he is fearful. He is still fearful. Actually, it, uh, yes, yes, Deepthi ji. So, I just, yes, uh, Dr. Poonam ji, yes, please. I hope you are well. Yes, I think, <laughs> ji. Yes. <laughs> ji. Arjuna is very happy from inside, but I think in the first shloka you say, you say when Sanjay says, Sagat Gadam Bheet Bheeta, <laughs> so he is afraid also. Because He's afraid what also. he is seeing is unimaginable, eyes. unimaginable, is it not, ji? Yeah. So he he's seeing that everybody is going inside God's mouth and churni tai rotta mangai hi. They is like crushed and ground. It's a horrible sight. So he is happy. He knows, but he is not very pleased with the appearance. Yes, yes. yes. Of AP. G G. Yes, doc. Yes. G G. Yes. Yes, please. G. Chinivas, he wants to add something. G sir. No, all right. So this actually reminds me of a situation which I had uh, seen, where uh, my uh, uh, guru's grandson, he had come to know of Damliji having a uh, German shepherd. So he had seen the beautiful photo of the German shepherd, and he felt wow, so nice. On the phone also, he was like, when I come here, I am going to see the German shepherd. He was very, very happy. So when he came, he saw that the German shepherd's height is equal to his height only. And as he stood in front of it, and the first bark that came out, he actually fell down and he started crying. And then he, he somehow tried to regain his posture, and then he kept saying, No, no, he is a very good dog. He does not do anything. He does not do anything. He is very lovely. He is very nice. And slowly, slowly, from far afar, he kept repeating those words and gathering the courage to go slowly closer to him and finally managed to touch him. But it was a very funny sight where he is inside afraid. But he is saying on the outside something else, probably more than to, it is not, this is not Arjuna speaking to Krishna, it is Arjuna speaking to Arjuna only and telling him, you know, this is Krishna only, this is Krishna, this is our beloved, he is, he is somebody who is the love of so many people, all the great yogis, that is why they worship. So Arjuna is doing some kind of self-counseling here while he is repeating all of these, while he is talking to Krishna, he is also reminding himself, no, no, you don't have to fear, because now, if just in the case of uh, my teacher's grandson, if you look at it, the size of the German Shepherd was so huge. And he had seen the photos, it was all cute in the photos, but in real life, the size, the big teeth, the bark, all that kind of overwhelmed him. And slowly he tried to do that, probably I feel Arjuna is doing something similar. He is trying to calm himself and go closer to this Vishwarupa. So he says, see, why is it, why will people not worship you? You are so powerful, you are the lord of the universe. He goes on. Yes, please. Srinivasi wants to say something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I think Arjun, Arjun is experiencing various uh, emotions. Uh, emotions. Emotions. Yes, yes. And uh, one, one of it uh, could be uh, guilt also. Okay, that's interesting. Why is it guilt? Infinite, uh, infinite, infinite might. Is uh, uh, driving his. Uh, <laughs> and what did he ask him? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Till, till okay. He was not knowing the might of this. Uh, Achha. G G. G G. So maybe he is also having it. Actually, that's a very second. perfect one. Yes, and it is going to come out now. That guilt is going to be visible immediately, very shortly in the few shlokas that come out after this. He is now building his case again to request to Arjuna to Krishna. Now he goes on. Tomadi Devaha Purushaha Puranam Tomasya Vishwasya Param Nidhanam Vetosi Vedyam Param Chadhama Tvayatatam Vishwamananta Rupa. He says, Thou art the Purusha of the Puranas, the primeval Lord, the highest knowledge to the knower, only thou dost accord. You only grant that knowledge to the great uh, knower. You are the Purusha, the Puranas speak about. You are the primeval Lord. I think we also yesterday saw Purusha Sukta's first line, I think it was uh, Melanji who read it out to us. It seemed just like description of Arjuna of the Vishwarupa. Sahastra Shirsha Purusha, Sahastraksas, Sahastra Path. So many heads, so many eyes, so many uh, countless feet. 
he now arjuna says you are the purusha that the purana speak about that supreme purusha what is purusha we will see later on in another adhyay but he says you are the one you gave the knowledge to the most wisest and the highest intellectual many times people think they are they get lost in their own limited intelligence and then they get pride of their own intelligence because they may have some talent they may have some great uh, skills all of that but here he says you you are something which is higher that is why they say adhyatma vidya vidya nam sir highest knowledge is that spiritual knowledge because it can take us move beyond what we can imagine as well and he says you are the param dhama you are the final destination for all he says and the universe is pervaded by your cosmic presence he goes on vayur vayur yamognir varunah shashankah prajapatistvam प्रपितामहश्च नमो नमस्ते स्तु सहस्रकृत्व पुनश्च भूयोपि नमो नमस्ते डेथ मून द एथेरियल वाटर्स द विंड एंड द फायर डेटीज दाव आर द क्रिएटर ऑफ क्रिएटर्स द फादर ऑफ ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज अगेन एंड अगेन बोइंग इन अ थाउजेंड रेपिटेशंस वंस मोर आई बो ऑफरिंग येट अगेन माय सल्यूटेशंस this is punah pranamami i am again and again a thousand times i'll bow to you you are not just the creator you are the creator who has created creators so many creations all of them you are the father of all is what arjuna is saying he goes on further now the problem is now arjuna is bowing now is this a full uh, surrender or is there some guilt inside we will have to see what shrinivas ji is saying some guilt is there chor ke daadi mein tin ka de say in hindi something like that is he remembering all that he has done because we know what he did in gita so far we don't know what happened in mahabharat so many things so much history is there behind and that krishna that beloved is now like this so we will see but now he is having one doubt now he is where should i bow because krishna is he in front of me now or is he behind me is he on the left or is he on the right because time and space all these have suddenly been you know twisted for arjuna is not able to understand anything so what does he do safest he he bows in all the directions all directions whichever dash disha are there i am bowing to you because he begins now he says namah purasta tatha prushta taste namo stute te sarvata eva sarva ananta virya mati vakramastvam ati vikramastvam sorry ananta virya mita vikramastvam सर्व समाप्नोषि ततोषि सर्व फ्रॉम द फ्रंट एंड फ्रॉम द बैक आई ऑफर माय सल्यूटेशंस टू यू इन ऑल द क्वाड्रेंट्स एंड इन ऑल डायरेक्शन सो वेर एवर कृष्णा इज देयर आई एम ऑफरिंग यू प्लीज डोंट थिंक आई एम डूइंग इट इन द रॉन्ग डायरेक्शन दैट आल्सो आई डोंट वांट टू डू यू आर एवरीवेयर आई विल जस्ट गो फिजिकली एवरीवेयर आई विल डू द प्रोस्ट्रेशन ही सेज दा वार्ट इन ऑल एंड इन एवरी लिविंग थिंग ऑलमाइटी एंड ऑल परवेडिंग दा वार्ट एवरीथिंग यू आर एवरीथिंग आई हैव नो डाउट he just wants you to he want krishna to change that is all he's saying i have recognized you i don't have doubts i am bowing to you now comes the part guilt is 100% palpable we will see now and many times in guilt they even confess their crime so this is what is going to happen arjuna is going to do that we are also going to hear the entire story of now the criminal what he has done what work crime he has done let us see sakheti matva prasabham yaduktvam यदुक्त हे कृष्ण हे यादव हे सखेती अजानत महिमान तवेद मैं प्रमाद प्रणयन वापी लुक एट दिस हाउ हि इज कॉलिंग हिम इज टेलिंग विश्वरूप हे कृष्ण हे यादव हे सखेती इज रिमाइंडिंग हिम यू आर माई पिलेव यू आर माई फ्रेंड आर यू नॉट हि गोज ऑन अज्यूमिंग दी हि सेज अज्यूमिंग दी टू बी माय मॉटल फ्रेंड i spoke rudely even though i did not intend this is the dialogue every friend says every friend irritates their friend and then says no no it was out of love or i did not mean to do it or i did not intend to do it well this is exactly what arjuna is saying he says assuming they to be my mortal friend i just thought you were an ordinary mortal friend of mine so i spoke rudely he says of thy greatness o krishna o yadava Oh, deluded! Out of love or ignorance, I was strongly deluded. So here we see guilt, which is very clear. But what is that guilt about? That in the next shloka, Arjuna is going to clearly say. So he has troubled Krishna. 
Arjuna has troubled Krishna is visible now in Arjuna's words only. Let us see the confession. Yachava hasartham asatkrutosi vihara shayasana bhojaneshu ekothavapya tyutadat samaksham takshamaye tvamaham aprameyam. So all the aprameya which I have done, please, please forgive me. When? Look at this. He says, Whatever disrespect to thee I may have shown, out of jest or play, whether I was joking or I was playing, either amongst companions or alone. So not just when he was alone with Krishna. When Krishna was there in company of others also, he had probably made fun of Krishna in front of others as well. That he is remembering and he is afraid now, what if this Ugra Rupa remembers all of it? What is going to happen to me? And he goes on. Else while resting or eating. Now these are two times you should really not disturb anybody. When anybody is eating or when they are resting. But Krishna was not spared even in these moments by Arjuna. He says even while resting or eating. Oh Lord I did not know. Oh faultless one. Thy forgiveness upon me please show. It seems pretty silly for us. Because this is a Vishwarupa in front of Vishwarupa. What is he talking? But this is Arjuna's state. And this is his emotions that are speaking. And he says, no, I really did all this wrong. I am sorry is what he's saying for everything that I have done, whether you were resting or you were sleeping. That time also I disturbed you, I disturbed you. He's remembering all of it. And somewhere he's feeling a love for Krishna that see this powerful one, I did all of this and he did not do anything. It is something which uh, only, uh, it's like sometimes grandchildren can sit in front of a very strict grandpa on the, on the lap of a strict grandfather and even pull the beard of the grandfather or pinch the grandfather and the father looks and see how lucky this grandchild is for us. This was just Hiranya Kashipu, I could not do anything. Now look at this grandson, he is able to do anything, he is not doing, he is not getting angry also. Why this transformation? Well, something like that, Arjuna here, Arjuna is just remembering all his moments with Krishna and he feels, no, I need to ask forgiveness, I cannot tolerate, I have did all of this, this is not right, he says. Please forgive me. Then he goes on. Pitasi lokasya chara charasya tvamasya pujasya gurur gariyan natvat samosti abhyadikaha kutonyo lokatrepi apratimampa prabhava. O divine teacher, the father of every single being, thou art the highest worship capable to the living. If in the three worlds equal to you there is none, superior to you, how can there be anyone? He says, see if there is no equal only, there is no comparison, how can there anybody be greater is what he is saying. He says, oh divine teacher, oh father, this is almost like buttering only which is going on right now. He wants to somehow get back to the Krishna's other form and he is, he is meaning all of it but somewhere inside there is fear. My one question is, do you think there should be fear inside of your heart in this moment? Do you think fear should be there? Yes, fear is there. This is a actually, It should not be there, but the sight of it is not very pleasant. Sight right? of it is not pleasant. Yes, Bunam Ji said, and with people going in and all that guru and bloodshed. And so, that is not a very but, pleasant. But but why do you think it should not be there then, Deep Ji? It should not be there. What? The fear. Why should the fear not be there? Yes. Because Krishna, uh, because Arjuna knows that what Krishna is actually. Right? Yes. So in spite because of knowing, is, in spite of yeah. knowing, why do you think he is having fear then? Because in spite of knowing. See, like for example, uh, when when a child gets scolding from a parent, so of course the facial expression changes. Ah, yeah. This so, is a good example. Yes. So then, what happens that? The child inside knows that the parent loves and whatever they, whatever he or she is doing is not mm -hmm. something like, not in his favor, it's not like that. But that fear, like, uh, like sometimes my son tells me, like if I become very stern, if I just stare at him also, mm -hmm. so he tells me, Mama, normal, we talk about it. It's his, <laughs> okay, just because my expression is like that. Okay. So he, he wants to talk to me, but because he doesn't, he doesn't like the pleasant view of the expression that is okay. coming Rest, okay. he, he trusts me and he wants to talk to me. Yes. Yes. It's like that how the child behaves. Okay, for a very young child, the innocence is fine, but after some time, if you see, it is like uh, in, the, in the teenage or in the adulthood also, then that, that bitterness starts coming in because the spirit is not understood. The spirit is lost because of emotions that come into play. 
they do not realize that this is the this is the reason the parent is doing something for a particular purpose and then what happens because this is the in what we call the interference of emotions so right now arjuna is in a place where he is understanding he is happily calling the ugra rupa hey yadava hey sakheti he is saying rishikesha brings happiness and you are that he is not thinking krishna has run away and put somebody else in his place it is the same individual but still in spite of that the emotions are again coming in between and again this is why uh, gita talks about you know getting the control of the indriyas control of indriyas because indriyas only create the trouble now arjuna is again experiencing fear when he should actually be experiencing joy and bliss and yes this is powerful it is overwhelming but it is my krishna he is like this also what a great happiness can come there but we see that the interference of emotions here so arjuna is doing all of this we will see krishna later on telling him you don't need to have this emotion of fear also even if i am like this but this is what happens this is why again indriyas are our uh, sometimes they are our trouble points only we think they are good when we feel it is logical to have certain emotions but most of the times these are all they say only if the mother of shirvindu ashram says beyond love there is no other emotion love is the only good emotion all other emotions are going to bring you down only that alone can take you higher so all other emotions are probably need to be you know filtered out these are all impurities when that is there that is when bhakti is possible if you look at siddha sanghas they are all celebrating ivarjuna is also repeating in the vishwarupa also they were saying these rishis who had already having no other desire no expectation from anybody no insecurity of losing anything they are just celebrating watching this vishwarupa Arjuna has not yet reached that point. He is still having his own insecurities. Still, he is worrying about absolutely silly things that Krishna must have got insulted because I told Krishna like this in front of that person, or Krishna was resting that day and I poked him or I disturbed him. Now, these are so insignificant in comparison to the Vishwarupa. But his mind is still speaking from the emotional level. There is a need now for Arjuna, though there is a great change. Arjuna has moved from being a skeptic to now a seeker but even in his in the seeker state he is still having interference of the emotions which are now probably reducing the quality of the vishwarupa which he could enjoy right now the emotions are speaking but it is good at least we learn from arjuna maybe we find the vishwarupa we can smile and laugh kathopanishad when we were studying actually everybody said when we talked there was a yama and nachiket dialogue somebody said ah, yama is now nothing to be afraid of yama is our krishna only we don't need to worry so if yama comes probably they will just yawn and say ah, show me the krishna roop this is not your buffalo is not scaring me at all so this aspect this aspect of fear is there in arjuna which probably could have been eliminated but again human beings we are all humans we will have our share of our own uh, what we can say some deficiencies which can be overcome by sadhana let us go on he goes tasmat pranamya pranidhaya kayam prasade नमस्कार you are the father to the son so you are the true father for the son sometimes children don't have father also how do they grow where do they get their source well there is one divine father looking after everyone i have seen my friends how they have grown some of them they do not have parents and yet there's a story of one orphan who doesn't know his parents only he somehow he grew in an orphanage he decided to do something for in the orphanage he saw other orphans also and he saw children with special needs he said at least as orphans who are regular get adopted but the orphans of uh, children with special needs orphan children they nobody takes care of them he said i'll take care of them that was what he thought so he went he studied he went to the university became got master of social work then he got somehow some funding in some competition he won then he got some barren land that barren land he started getting funding and then he made a village now and village for in people with special needs now he is married and he's got two children also and is a beautiful flourishing village he gets awarded all across india and the world also for so for his work and a brilliant srishti village the name of the village is also srishti 
So where, who is the parent for those who do not have parents in the world? Yes, there is a divine parent and he is also conscious and he sees that divine parent guiding and taking care of him. So here Krishna says, thou art the father to the son, the companion to a friend. Sometimes people feel lonely and they say, I don't have any friends. Why nobody is understanding me? Nobody is near. Turn to Krishna. He is a very understanding and loving friend. He will talk to you. He will take you across. You will not have to worry about being alone anymore. So that, he says, yes, the companion of a friend. The beloved to the lover. So the lover also, somebody who is not having anyone to love or somebody to take care of. Krishna is the lover. He will take care. He's, this is Arjuna's statement. Arjuna says, yes, I know this. I have seen this. We know in Mahabharata how many people Krishna supported. So many people with his divine love. This is what Arjuna is saying. And he's saying, oh Lord, thy mercy upon me, please extend. He says, show some love to me also. Please, please extend your mercy on me. I am sorry and please, I am surrendering to you. Again he goes on, Adrushta Purvam Rishitosmi Drushtva Bhayenacha Pravyathitam Manome Tadeva Me Darshaya Deva Rupam Prasida Devesha Jagan Nivasa. Again he says, please, he says, whatever was never seen before, I now saw. But my mind is admitting honestly, he says, I have seen what no, it was never seen before. But he says, my mind still trembles with both fear and awe. I am having fear also, I have a great awe also. Both are mixed. He says, O oh, refuge of thy universe, shower thy compassionate grace. Thy earlier peaceful form, let my vision embrace. He says, show me that earlier peaceful form. Let me see Krishna again. I want to see that Krishna again. Please, enough, enough. Thank you, he says. But I am not able to bear it, he says. And then he goes on, now comes the one more request before. Arjuna is not somebody who is just going to leave a moment. Because he had heard of one more beautiful avatar of, uh, of Krishna, which was the Chaturbhoja Rupa. So he says, give me that Chaturbhoja Darshana also before you go. Before you go back to being Krishna, I want that Darshana also. He is afraid also, but you see that connection. This is the beauty aspect, beautiful aspect of Bhakti, you know, when it is there, it can, you know, even if all now impurities of emotions are there, bhaya is there, all other, there is one string which is connected. Uh, Gita talks about asha, pasha, shatair, baddhaha. This is the hundred bonds of desire which pull us down. The Kathopanisha talks about hundred and one bonds. The one bond is not that which pulls us down, that is the bond which takes us up and that is our connection. If we don't lose that golden link, we don't lose that chain, we don't have to worry, all the emotions will come, they will go, but you hold on to that tightly. So Arjuna is holding on to that, though he is facing, it's like, he is like into a, what we can say, a kusti only, he is being dhobi pachad only, with all his emotions are being, he's just, everything, his understanding is being twisted, he's been, he is afraid also, he is blissful also, he is happy also, he is excited also, he is sorrowful also, he is guilty, all the spectrum of emotions have taken place in a very short period. It will make anybody tired. But no, Arjuna is still holding on and he still says one more request. Please, what does he say? Ask once. Just he asks, what does he say? Kiritinam gadinam chakrahastam ichametvam drushtum aham tathaiva tenaiva rupena chatur bhujena sahastra bahu bhava vishwa murte. Oh, sahastra bahu, you have so many thousands of arms. Please show me just the four armed form of yours. That one which I crave to see, he says, I crave to see the form my mind understands. With thy crown, mace and discus in hands, O thousand arm universal form, do unveil. The divine four armed figure of thine, please reveal. He says, show me that Chatur Bhoja Rupa which I have seen. With the cave, which, which is the crown is there, there is a mace in hand, there is a disc also. That form I want to see, Krishna. Now Krishna speaks, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Maya Prasannena Tavarjunedam Rupam Param Darshitamatma Yogat Tejo Mayam Vishwamananta Madhyam Yanme Tvadan Yena Nadrushta Purvam. Lord Krishna spoke, O oh Arjuna, by my favor alone this form you can see, my luminous form from which the world came to be. My original self that mortal eyes before have never gazed. This infinite universal form that you have witnessed and praised. He says, this is a very rare occasion that you have experienced. 
it is not not everybody can get to see this and it was my favor i thought i will let you know i thought i will let you see this god knows how much punya arjuna has done in the previous births also to come to this point where he can actually direct it is i think uh, it's a very brilliant blessing to have a darshana it is said and here it is there vasudevam sarvam iti that is a mahatma sa durlabham that universe in the universe getting to see vasudeva that is a very rare occasion and arjuna has got that that is a reason to celebrate he goes on naveda naveda na yagnya dhyanair na danair na so not by veda dhyaya not by uh, not by adhyayan of the vedas not by dana not by yagnya he goes on cha kriya bhairna tapo bhire grahi evam rupah shakya aham niraloke drishtam tvadanyena kuru pravir not by researching the vedas or by pouring sacrificial oblations neither by charity nor by performing right actions not even by the strictest of penance is it possible for man to see my perfect form apart from you none has or can nobody has seen this form like this apart from you of course krishna's prasad is there then everybody can see it who ever krishna wishes but he says this is a rare one the meaning of this is that not by researching vedas he is not saying researching vedas is bad but people when they research also there is a ankar of an individual sometimes which comes in he says not the highest intellectual skill of an individual will help him to get this no matter how brilliant greatest memory greatest uh, tark uh, greatest uh, what we can say understanding all that is there in the individual that may not he may earn the praise of all the people in the world but he will not he will not receive this vishwarupa because of that he goes on not by pouring sacrificial oblations so not so many yagnyas done for a uh, 100000 yagnyas a person has done that also will not guarantee that will not guarantee that you will get this vision not by dana also somebody gives away everything also in dana i want to do this dana that will also not guarantee it's a great punya giving away what is yours how difficult it is but even that will not grant not even by only doing great karmas also the greatest karma also a person does in the world cannot guarantee this not even by the strictest of penances most difficult tapasyas even the hatha yogis strictest penance also will not guarantee this what you have got why is arjuna why has arjuna got this krishna has also told this before in the gita so not by all these four not by dana not by research of veda not by yagnya not by tapa then by why is it arjuna has got this anybody well it surrendered to that is surrendered yes vasudevan ji the bhakti the prem that what is there inside of arjuna and if you see krishna had also told i will share you more because i can see you are enjoying what is coming your heart is receiving it with that love is what krishna says and that is why raja vidya raja guhyam pavitra medam uttamam he says i will share you some more because because bhakti so sometimes bhakti gives us all the bonuses that we need more than what we need also we will get it is something like that uh, uh yes sir uh, vishnu tatva ha ji 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 you can do karma yoga jnana yoga bhakti yoga hmm. you can never do fully yes without, without, without full surrender is it not because unless surrender is there individual interferences will keep coming even atyogi thinks he is doing it ha ha even Not even atyogi ha ha yes yes he, he i am doing i am controlling my body yes Yes. 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 कर्ता भाव 
because kar who is doing it that starts and that who becomes the idea of the individual when that who can become the idea of the universal divine why do we want to allow this limited uh, entity to uh, thrive inside of us it's something like that krishna's butter classes also when they go on for the children also all the teachers are everybody are told one thing no are not teachers you are studying it with the children you are studying we are doing a gita study i also am studying what i know that is all because the moment we start saying we know this that day krishna will come and say you don't know anything he will show what we do not know that is ankar he is there to teach but if we want to learn so that is the thing but krishna here is telling no not by all of this this will not guarantee one participant got a such a beautiful vishwa darshan vishwarup darshan which i have definitely not got and what was her experience i actually felt was even in depth than the adhyay of the gita means the description which she wrote what she saw it was so beautiful and it was so wonderful she even had the she could she described the smell that she got she described the height difference of krishna arjuna the position everything around her in a long message what she had sent of what she found well this is the thing it is not by studying or by researching a particular scripture or by doing certain great works of punya or by dana but arjuna is got it because of that rise it is like the soul has to be ready even for arjuna to come to this point how much krishna had to work like we can say spinout minor surgery of the mind he had to keep doing so he can come out otherwise look at the arjuna we knew in the first adhyay and look at the arjuna now such a great change has taken place well this is it and krishna goes on now he tells him but but he says no but the fear inside of you is wrong that is asat that is not right that has to be eliminated he goes on further mate vyatha ma cha vimudh bhavo drushtva rupam ghoramitru mamedam vyapet bhihi pritamana pritamana punastvam tadeva me rupam idam prapashya he says seeing this tremendous form of mind you should not fret this ignorant state of panic you must starkly reject he says but you have got he says you are good because of which you have got this all this is fine but he says this is still not krishna wants perfection inside of his bhakta also he wants perfection and he says no this is ignorance inside of you this is a darkness which is making you fear which is a wrong state of mind he says this you must reject you don't have to be afraid of this vishwarupa even if it is in front of you cast away your fear as i show you the milder form of mind behold and rejoice witnessing my other embodiment divine but he says it's all right i'll give you that chaturbhuj darshan that you want to see sanjay uvacha itya now sanjay speaking itya arjunam vasudevas tathoktva svakam rupam darshayama sabhuyah ashwasayama sach bhitamenam bhutva punah saumya vapur mahatma Sanjay said after saying these words to Arjuna the four armed manifestation was assumed by Krishna then resuming his peaceful form full of love and grace the lord returned to console the fear struck face so here this he has now come back come back to share that uh, beautiful uh, form and then he comes back to his form to his to look after his bhakta who is now really been he has gone through so much in such a short time watching all these transformations so krishna resumes his old form after giving the chaturbhuj darshan now arjuna speaks another change in his emotion this time it's a different one now it is a different shanti we can see in arjuna's voice arjuna vacha drushtvedam manusham roopam tava saumyam janardana idane masme samvrattah sachetah prakritim gatah seeing your four armed form coming to the fore an ecstatic delight overwhelms me once more so soothing this peaceful form of yours i find a silent sea of bliss now fills my mind so this is that brahmananda this is sagar is there inside of arjuna only he is feeling just watching that beautiful chaturbhuj rupa he says all has become peaceful inside he says all these ripples or all those waves which were suddenly very powerful and moving some uh, suddenly everything has become peaceful and it is like some switch has been turned off all the fluctuating emotions have suddenly become quiet and he says i am feeling blissful i am feeling delighted and yet i am fully fully calm on the inside 
So if you see, this is the ananda, this is the ananda where there is no excitement. The quietude and he's saying, Sacheta, he's got that, his chitta has become quiet and he's now absorbed it. That small gla glimpse that he got of Chaturbhuja Rupa was enough for him, was enough for Arjuna to suddenly put away all his emotions and become quiet and peaceful. Krishna goes on now, Krishna speaks, he is Krishna, Arjuna is Krishna, charioteer is now back and Arjuna is happy and Krishna speaks to him. He says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Sudur darsham idam rupam drushtvanasi yan mama deva apyasya rupasya nityam darshana kankshanaha. Lord Krishna spoke, My forearm form that has been seen by you has been witnessed by only the rarest few. For even the demigods wonder and desire to see this avatar forever they aspire. So even the devas yearn for the opportunity. That is why in the vision you could see how even all the great Vishwadevas, Rudras, Ashwini Kumas, Ashwini Kumas are the nimble horsemen, divine horsemen of Ayurveda. They are the healing horsemen, divine ones on their horse. These horses also stopped. Rudra stopped moving. Everybody, all the Adityas, suddenly everybody has got... Because this is a darshana which even the Devas aspire for. It is said, Rashmi Mantam Samudyantam Devasura Namaskritam. Pujayami Vivasvantam Bhaskaram Bhuvaneshwaram. So you are the Lord and for him uh, you are that brilliant one. The Devas also bought you, the, uh, the, uh, the Asuras also, all, all the forces tremble and surrender is what, uh, they do the Namaskars. This is what Krishna is saying. See, even gods aspire, Arjuna, you have got it. Let us go on. Again he repeats the same thing. He again repeats. Naham Vedai na tapasa na dane na Danena na chejaya shakya evam vidho drushtum drushtava nasi maam yatha. He says, the form that you saw cannot be seen neither by the Vedas nor by the penances, strictest, nor by sacrifices, nor by charities to the poorest. To see this form by all it has not possible been. It's not sabki baat ki baas nahi, not everybody can do this. All people cannot do it, then not those also who have done the greatest things which human beings consider supreme. Then who? Then how? Next shloka makes it clear. Bhaktyat vananyaya shakya aham evam vidhorjuna nyatum drushtum chitatvena praveshtum cha parantapa. So, bhakti is again the secret. That is what we can see. Krishna is again. Uh, Every Adhyay we see, like all roads lead to Rome, it is, there is a saying like that, all roads become simplified with Bhakti, where Bhakti element must come into it, it changes, it makes everything easy. Oh Arjuna, Arjuna only by the purest, only by the purest devotion can it possible be, as with a desireless love alone can one know me and truly see me in essence and element and in my consciousness be immersed and present. Krishna says, only when that purest devotion, it is pure in the sense, it is what we can say. This ananya bhakti, there is something, ananya shintayanto maam, what Krishna told, yoga kshemam vahamyam was the promise for somebody who is doing that ananya bhakti, means pure love and that is a perfect one, perfect in the sense, nothing, no other, uh, what we can say, impurities are in it, it is perfectly filtered, perfectly distilled undiluted pure love without any other emotional interference that alone can ensure is what Krishna is saying and with desire that and that is actually what is pure love it is that which has nothing wanting nothing in return purely one directional only it is not asking for anything in return it is always that is the only way it should be it has to be one directional if there is a lover and beloved also still they should have both of them should have one directional love only that is the perfect one and Krishna is saying, channel it to the divine if you are able to do that. Then he says, that is why, that is why it is possible. And Arjuna is learning about it now and he is just, and he is a good learner also. Quickly he grasps things. That is something special about Arjuna from the beginning. And truly see me in essence and element and in my consciousness be immersed and present. So suddenly all the other things which we think are so important have suddenly disappeared in the face of this aspect when the purity is there on the inside. Great karmas, they can become divya karmas also when bhakti element is added. What about what happens to a 
दिस एंड नॉलेज ऑल्सो सीकिंग नॉलेज वेन भक्ति एलिमेंट कम्स इन देन बिकम्स अ ग्रेट आनंद ओनली ब्रिलियंट जॉय ऑफ लर्निंग टेक्स प्लेस एंड ग्रेटेस्ट लर्निंग इज पॉसिबल सेम इज द केम ऑफ सेम इज द केस ऑफ कर्मा एंड इवन भक्ति डिवोशन टू द डिवाइन ऑल्सो वेन यू एड प्रॉपरली एड दैट एलिमेंट विच इज प्योर प्योरिटी ऑफ श्रद्धा कम्स इन विथ ब्यूटिफुल एंड विदाउट एनी वॉट वी कैन से वी कॉन्ट आस्क फॉर एनी थिंग इन रिटर्न इफ वी आर एबल टू प्रे देन दिस इज द बेस्ट प्रेयर इज ओनली थैंक यू एंड दैट प्रेयर कैन डू एवरी थिंग थैंक यू ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड फॉर द डिवाइन एंड आई हैव सीन पीपल हु हैव नथिंग से थैंक यू अ फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड विथ अक्यूट माई लॉर्ड ल्यूकीमिया शी टोल्ड आई एम थैंकफुल टू गॉड फॉर द कैंसर विच शी गॉड एंड माई मदर एज अ पैथोलॉजिस्ट टोल मी सेवेंटीन आउट ऑफ द एटीन डिड नॉट मेक इट and she was the one person who made out of the 18 and yet after all of it and it was the right at the time in life when she was going to get married she got that diagnosis and everything that uh, changed and for her, she had to go through chemotherapy so many experiences but she could say i am thank you thankful for this this taught me what i would have never learned in my entire life i have, this has really changed me now she is back into the world she is doing brilliant work so this this aspect of krishna is saying with the purest love without asking anything in return that only will allow you to remain in my consciousness it will allow you to enjoy the presence of krishna in life as well in all our deeds krishna goes on mat karma mat karma krun mat paramo mat bhaktah sang varjitah nirvairah sarva bhuteshu yah sa mame ti pandava o arjuna surrender to me perform my bidding become my devotee and an instrument of my working with enmity towards none from desires become free accept me my way for such a man shall only come to me so here again the advice of krishna krishna does not order also if you see here also is just advising he could have ordered any time now also he is just advising arjuna he says see arjuna for you i am saying surrender to me perform my bidding become work for me work for me become my representative you can even become a vibhuti you can become a vibhuti of mine and in the vibhuti darshan did we not hear krishna saying in his vibhutis i am arjuna among pandavas is it not so he is representative he is arjuna is now i remember one friend of mine who uh, i had just got introduced to i just uh, while talking uh, she was a fan of arjuna when i told like we start with our groups whenever we study we give marks to arjuna she was offended how can you give marks to arjuna because he is a symbol of krishna for her it is something uh, something like that so this aspect he says become become a vibhuti become a vibhuti is what he says become my devo- devotee and an instrument of my working now this is the most important aspect with enmity towards none from desires become free accept me my way for such a man shall only come to me he says having enmity towards no one means without having hatred inside of your heart desireless and heart free of hatred that is the only way of for a way of bhakta now my question is what about duryodhana then should arjuna not hate duryodhana while he is playing while he is fighting or can he still fight without hating duryodhana because uh, krishna has already told him that if it's it's it, you are the i mean nimitta matra and uh, okay you are the nimitta matra but can the nimitta matra not hate and do the work because if he if we, if he th- if he listens to krishna what is saying so what krishna is doing of course he knows and it is it is more about uh, uh, what do you call it? keeping the dharma alive and keeping it intact Okay. Okay. Yes, please. All right, Deepthi ji. Yes, Milan ji, and then I'll come to Shrinivas ji. It is. It is the quality that we should hate, not the person. We should hate, but but that is doesn't, is it not? Yes. But that is also. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, it is. Doesn't doesn't yes. Yeah. I'll just I'll just mute you and then speak, and you can unmute again. Yes, yes, uh, Milan ji. What uh, I was saying is so that is also a dwe- hate. No, dwesha is hate, is it not? so hate the wrong of duryodhana and then do the work is that what we can uh, no uh, the, i i believe that uh, uh, you know when a person is uh, doing a bad action um, the soul is there which is divine 
but uh, because of the veil he is um, doing uh, anything that is bad okay. so we should um, keep ourselves away from that person because of that bad action and not hate that person if that person comes to us to ask us for any help then we should always remember that the divine is in that person and okay. we should help but keep our ourselves away from that person because of uh, uh, not being uh, we should not be associated with him because of his wrong uh, way of thinking that okay. is what uh, ji ji all right yes melan ji uh, shrinivas ji you were adding was it something similar yes please no yeah similar Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, rather than uh, just, uh, hmm. I mean, all right. Okay, I yeah. Ji ji. Very very strong. Thing. It's a very strong. But um, sometimes things are like that. No? Passionately, people do very wrong things, and then what happens? We are not able to bear it, tolerate it. In the world, there are animal natures. People are there like that as well. And then, uh, if you, but problem is here. Why Krishna says don't have hatred? Yes, Duryodhana has done the worst things. He is not worthy. He has tried to murder everyone so many times. But Krishna says not to have hate because the moment hate is housed in the heart, Krishna cannot remain in the same heart. Where will the divine will work when there is hatred inside? It is something without hatred, Arjuna has to fight with uh, Duryodhana. His arrow must pierce the heart of Duryodhana only when he is fighting. Duryodhana must not survive, but he must not have hatred because the moment hatred works, it becomes attached to ankar, ankar, passion, all. Everything comes into it. The picture and divine will cannot function. If the divine divine will works, it can it avoids it always. Krishna also, if you see, was avoiding the battle for all moments until it came to a point where nothing could be done, and it, that is why the last moment came to that place. It's like uh, if you see Gnaneshwar, Santa Gnaneshwar, who wrote beautiful Gnaneshwari at a very early age of 21, who's called Mauli also. He said it's not about hating. It's not about hating. It is just make that person realize that wrong. and that is the greatest punishment you can give for a sinner also giving that person the realization of his the sakshatkar of his wrong itself is the biggest punishment enough because that sakshatkar becomes the prayashchit and that becomes the transformation he ceases to be a sinner and now the path changes but for this aspect also because if you see when hate comes into picture passion comes in with passion comes other emotions and all the what we can say Full uh, mixture, a beautiful picture is being painted, and in that, somebody is pouring black color paint. It is like that. That is hate. So Krishna is just saying that this aspect for an instrument to function as divine will. Divine has the job of giving. It's yoga shemam vaham yam. He is also the Sanatan Dharma's guardian. We cannot say that he cannot. He will forgive everybody. No, he is strong and powerful. If he wants us to work through him to do some work of, uh, for the higher work. Yes, we will allow. We will do whatever work is there, but we cannot have hatred because hatred will cause, uh, will, uh, will, you know, scar our own judgment. It will just trouble ourselves and it will consume us, and then we will stop remaining divine only. We will fall from that nature. And for an instrument, this is the last part. Krishna says, no, don't be. Uh, he says, don't have this. Have enmity towards no one. Let no, like I think as Milanji also was saying, let the wrong deed, wrong in the individual is your problem. Not the individual. The individual is a misguided person. Your aim is that wrong inside. How you can eliminate it? Again, your job is not to find out how to eliminate. Also, that is Krishna's job. You are nemita matra. You just understand the moments. You will get the hints. You will get the direction. Your Vivek Buddhi will tell you because it will lead you on the right path, provided your emotions are not mired by this aspect. Surrender to the divine. Become the instrument. Is what Krishna says. Like we tell to kids also, na no? that okay, bad mm. thing and good thing. Yeah. We don't tell kids more generally. We don't. We we have the I mean tendency to use the word bad and mm. saying not so good. There's yeah. A difference. Yes. Yes. There's there's a positive aspect to certain things, and we so I mean as you as Krishna said, explain as Krishna said that if we if we try to imbibe that, I mean yes. Yes. We will be able to make the other person realize the mistake and correct. 
yes yes and our, our job yes yes is and our job also is not to make people realize things also our job is to do our dharma do our action and that will bring the realization in the individual the transformation i have also tried talking to many of my friends talking has not helped at all and then there are friends i have not talked to for many years <laughs> they remember they say you talk like this no this was useful and i was like are yaar what is this when i am trying it does not work so the aspect is actual nimitta matra state is just when you are doing what is meant to do and not having any aspect inside of that that with bhakti again krishna is beautifully ending this vishwarupa darshana with this aspect fight fight but don't have this hatred without hatred uphold your duty uphold the dharma the kshatriya must fight he should fight for his principle he should not allow the ideal to fall down but while fighting for it do not add the the aspect of hate truth is so powerful in itself it does not need any more support truth can bring down the biggest uh, mountain also but that aspect is there and with bhakti uh, it is it is sometimes very good also when the entire headache of uh, everything is on divine heads why should we worry we just have to do what is our moment what duty it has come and then we can enjoy we can enjoy the show there is a nice uh, saying by tukaram man of his abhang tuka mane uge raha je je hoil tete paha meaning tukar says just stand like vithal only put your hands on your hips and watch just stand and watch just see what happens sometimes that is itself sufficient you do your duty and then stand what has to happen will happen this aspect is there with this we complete the vishwarupa darshan uh, just uh, i will conclude with the shanti mantra and then one small uh, question i'll have after which we'll go to the next adhyay hari om sarve bhavant sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashya dukha bhag bhavet hari om tat sat krishnam vande jagat gurum om shanti shanti yes so my question is uh, what next now for a bhakta darshan is the ultimate is it not that is the aim the aspiration of the bhakta now what after, what do you think is going to come after uh, darshan what more is required after darshan in the geeta as well because this is the height what we can say the entire climax of the movie itself is reached something like that darshan has now got arjuna has got the darshan what do you think will be there next now in the geeta what more is required or is there anything required after this yes please anybody yes okay punam ji once darshan ho gaye uske baad to bas ho gaya na chahiye okay after darshan ke baad to lagta hai ki स्मॉलेटिंग Yes, because what is going to happen after darshan? After darshan, what's going to happen? We are going to have life as usual, is it not? We, after darshan, also next day he has to take, get up again, go for work, or go and do other duties, whatever this uh, aspects are there. That is not going to change. So what's going to happen? Or no, no, I saw that darshan. Now it's over. There's, there's nothing more is required. What's going to happen? That's not enough, is it not? So then now Krishna does not want Arjuna to. enjoy and just disappear in that bhava also he has to understand what real bhakti is so now krishna is going to say something about bhakti yog and is going to bring him back to the ground no you have to come this is how krishna keeps you know continuously raising the consciousness again bringing him back to the earth as what shervinder calls ascent and descent we should rise we should rise go to that high state of consciousness but then we should bring that consciousness into our life also it is not enough to go elsewhere like that so that is a wrong perception many people feel that is this is this is one world that is another world i had a friend of mine whom i actually met at when i was in the, i had to go to meet a relative uh, my father was in the icu that time i had to uh, in the hospital that was my classmate and a very mischievous classmate in school he was the uh, in the emergency ward he is a doctor and a well established one and so he saw me and he said hey hi and then 
he just came and asked me and he said uh, what uh, we'll have some tea he said okay uh, yeah but not now why why because of bhagavad gita you cannot take tea also now is it what he was asking so now there is nothing in gita talking anything related to that but that is a misconception i said yes yes now after bhagavad gita my bowels also have stopped cleaning uh, clearing everything has changed now completely no it is not the case it is just we have to bring this into practice so if arjuna is going to live on his past that i got a darshan that day so all my children all my grandchildren all my relatives must now come and do namaskars to me i'll keep giving them aashirwad what's going to happen then arjuna has to has his duty he has to not leave that uh, aspect he has to very well be grounded and krishna is going to say about the next chapter which is the bhakti yog and now gita is going to t- take a more practical turn the next parts of the adhyayas are going to be very much krishna's bhaktas are the most practical ones their followers they are implementing his principles and krishna wants wants all of them to be perfect in their own kshetras also that is what we will yes. see arjuna yes. has to do the karm yoga that is what krishna has been telling since the beginning yes that yes will, like take a back seat yes 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 absolutely arjuna has to fight a battle now that is ahead so let us see now what bhakti yoga krishna is going to share is going to be the shortest chapter in the gita but the most significant one also yes please yes shrinivas you want to add something yes sir i have put a doubt in my mind that it is said that everything is uh, uh, acceptable in love and war ha huh. it is yeah. said by whom even, uh, even a deceit to some extent or uh, maybe a mischief to some extent yeah or maybe a lie to some extent or maybe so that is also permitted so where where so where this fits into our uh, teachings of gita uh, i one uh, shri basi that is a poetic thought is it not if if you say that is a poetic thought of an individual it is not uh, what we can say uh, gita is, uh, that is that is what we have been seeing even in uh, shivaji history if we study there was he was he was following ganimi kava yes so that is that is to something like uh, 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 cheating on the enemy keeping them in bond yeah and uh, performing your uh, war activity ji krishna has told in the vibhuti darshana dyutam chaleta masmi means i am the deception in the gambler also is what krishna is saying is it not now what what is the ultimate means what is its use means there there is dharma artha kama and moksha so what is the means these are the four purusharthas they say one is dharma so what is the dharma which is being uh, upheld we must uh, and uphold our dharma but what are the means that we are uh, i'll just mute you shrinivas ji so you can just ask after that yes please so dhar, dhar, there are four purusharthas it is said so dharma first is the dharma of course we must uphold our dharma there is no doubt about it then artha what is the means that we are using so that is so important when we we say love love all is fair in love and war and then use wrong means what is going to happen our kama is going to take and our desires are going to take control so kama has to be checked that is when artha can be properly done artha can be used the right means can be used when your desires are in control and when your right means are used then moksha is yours only otherwise that is a falling apart so krishna is saying uh, like if you see he takes arjuna to a swayamvar and says now we have to flee with the bride if if you understand the higher purpose why it is because it is going against the will of the even at that time it is not just now that parents <laughs> go against the will of the uh, what their daughters or uh, their uh, like even it is many commerce common in india that it happens but at that time also Krishna and Arjuna the Arjuna says we go to this swam Arjuna goes happily with Krishna and Krishna says now we have to do this Arjuna is logically what is this this is wrong you are a great yadava king i i have such principles i am shishya of this person i cannot do this i am kunti putra Krishna then says no see here Arjuna this is against the will this is the individual will of this is being it is being forced upon her can such a person ever be happy in life and then arjuna agrees and yes i will do it so if you see is it is it going against the will here is, is it is it a, what we can say is this a wrong action then what krishna did uh, shrinivas ji for an example in this case no was it a wrong action then of krishna no see actually the uh, the intention or the uh, cause that is the supreme 
Yes, and if for that, is, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, if the cause is uh, pious or maybe a good one, yes, then uh, I yes. think it is justified. Because yes, when why this cause, why this cause was good was because what if you see this cannot be an example. Otherwise, then everybody would follow a precedent. See, Krishna has given this tradition that we must go into swamvas and steal the bread. This is not what Krishna did. This was actually here. This this child or this daughter, this girl did not feel like uh, she, she was being forced into a marriage she did not want. And Krishna wanted to say in the name of tradition, in the main like. Maybe I do not know the entire story, but maybe it was like she belonged to this particular group or uh, there was some kind of alliance that was being forged or the parents would have felt this is the right uh, match for this person and let us go ahead this way. Uh, so that is what it was. Somewhere inside her heart belonged to somebody else. Now when one person's heart belongs to another person, can we push that person aside? It's like crushing that individual's life out of the person only. And Krishna told Arjuna and Arjuna then understood. Otherwise Arjuna did not understand at all. He was like, no. I will not do this. And then when, when he understood. So here we see the the spirit of the thing is more important. Uh, all is fair in love and war. That means Krishna says, see this is Surya and this is Jayadrat, Arjuna, fight. Now what was that? Was it breaking the rules? No, it was not breaking the rules. It was in the spirit, the higher spirit. Why they say Krishna Dharma is higher? We will see one more shloka last in the 18th Adhyay. Sarva Dharman Paritkaji. So even Dharma which we are being told right now as most important, Krishna says there is still something higher than that dharma also. We could call it a Krishna dharma, which is somewhere higher. And when that is followed, all fall into place. We don't have to worry about anything that we are doing wrong at all. Because when you are in connection with that, that is the essence of truth. And that is why they say truth is so powerful or truth protects. Truth is the shield, truth is the weapon. So, yes, uh, Srinivasji, I think that is where we can look at it. All is love and fair. I mean, all is fair in love and war is probably a poetic thought which has come from the kind of that, that is what the uh, main aspect is. That is why this is a very famous saying as well, because people understand that. But in a war also, if people do impro wrong things in the name of war, start using biological weapons, start doing all other, uh, you know, dirty things, what's going to happen? Hitler did was absolutely not fair and what brought, it brought about the ruin of his nation also and everybody else. So there it is not fair doing all of this. So here all is not fair in that situation also. Probably the spirit or the essence is what uh, what we can see as university. Yes. Yes. Can we say then uh, that while seeking truth, everything, everything is fair? And while seeking truth, keeping our individuals aside and surrendering to the divine is the only fair thing. And becoming Nimitta Matra is the fairest of all. That is all we can say. Becoming Nimitta Matra, our ego will be able to keep us aside. It's all right. Maybe the same sadhana also. Many people, uh, everything, mother had written a beautiful aspect of surrender also. Everybody imagines their sadhana should go this way only. After I have done 10 years of sadhana, have I progressed? Many times students go to their guru and ask. Now, uh, what is the idea of progression? Is, should it, means now, idea of, even one Shishya was asking uh, Sri Aurobindo about it. And then Sri 